This video explains transfer functions. At certain times, administrators will need to move objects across environments that do not communicate. This could mean moving from one atomic system to another, or from one client to another on the same system. We have two options at our disposal. The first is the basic export-import feature, which lets you export to and import from an XML file. This is good for a limited number of individual objects in the same folder. It's convenient because it uses a file, but it's not so great for mass exports. The other option is the transport case. This is a virtual container of sorts to which you can add much larger volumes of objects from different folders. Copies aren't made to the transport case. The objects are simply marked for it. Once you're ready to execute the transport, you rely on database utilities. The transport case relies on the database for the management of this operation via dbunload and dbload. Clients are a useful basis for this type of case study. Having separate clients means maintaining separate and fully segregated operational environments. In our example, we have clients 100 and 200, and it's physically impossible to orchestrate operations across these clients. This is by design. In order for administrators to share data across clients or systems, you rely on export-import functions, or the transport case. What you choose depends on volume and location of the objects. If you use the transport case, you select the objects, transfer them to the case, then use the database utilities to dbunload the transport case to a file on the source client and dbload from that file on the target client. We'll first consider export-import. We have some objects on client 100. We want to copy them to client 200. We're in client 100. We have a number of jobs objects. Let's export some of them and import in client 200. We select and use transfer functions by right-clicking. The system immediately generates a file which you can save locally. It doesn't give you the option of appending objects from other folders. Note that jobs are simple objects. When you're exporting composite objects like workflows, the system will ask you if you want to incorporate the subcomponent objects like jobs. The prompt will say, export with references. Let's move to client 200. In Client 200, we right-click in the appropriate folder to import from the XML file. You have the option of overwriting existing objects or creating new copies. The transport case is a more complete feature. It lets you add objects from various sources and clients, and then perform a mass export and import via the database. You can use the interfaces associated with dbunload and dbload, or you can execute those utilities in batch mode on the command line. We've added the syntax. There's a full set of options, which are documented, and will provide the bare minimum to perform an unload and load. Dash I references the matching INI file. Dash B is used to specify that we're using transport, Dash D deletes all objects from the transport case upon transfer. Dash C specifies the client. And dash X is the file name and location. The first step involves transferring a selection of objects to the transport case. We'll select a group of jobs and a workflow. Below we have a command window which we'll use to execute our commands. We've selected our objects. We can right click and transfer. We can also use the More function in the toolbar. We'll show both. We can head to the transport case. These are the contents of our transport case. We use the database utilities on the command line to unload the contents of the transport case to a file. We can simply type in the dbunload batch utility. This will start the unload interface. 
The DB unload interface gives you a specific function for the transport case. This is important. Each client has its own transport case. If you want to transfer all objects from multiple cases, you click Yes. In our case, we're only interested in the contents of Client 100, so we click No. This would produce the result you expect. Note that when you go this route, the utility automatically outputs the file to a name and location, defined in the utility's INI file using a setting called Outputs. Before you unload, you need to change this setting, or it will use the default uc underscore data.txt file in the DB directory. Obviously, we can't use this, it's the default new data load file. So you just need to update your INI before executing this. Let's do the transfer in batch mode using the dash B option. This is entirely consistent with what we explained. Note the dash D option. This will empty out the transport case when we're done. We're transferring to a file called file.txt in the temp directory. Our DB unload succeeded. We now have a file in the temp directory. Let's execute our DB load to client 200. We start with the interface, but ultimately we'll execute in batch mode. The system is about to import from the file. We cancel out. As you can see, the syntax is pretty much the same. The only major difference, of course, is the client number. Our objects have been imported in the matching folder. The transport case will verify and then recreate the folder structure. Note something important. Before you perform the import, you can actually make changes to the objects in your file. For this, we use dbchange or ucbchng with a script file. This file will contain all the changes you wish to apply to your object settings before upload. While this is out of scope, we recommend reading the documentation for dbchange and the syntax of the script invoked with the option dash one.